AEW star Darby Allen has suffered a major injury that could keep him out for a while and has derailed plans that he already intended to take part in. What's the injury? How long could he be out for? What the hell happened? I'm going to let you know in this video. We're also going to be talking about WWE partnering with GCW, opening the forbidden door wide open. There's a lot to get into. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Okay, so Darby Allen was originally supposed to take some time off to climb Mount Everest. He even played it up on TV last week before his big match with Jay White at AEW Big Business. And he said that there was no guarantee that he could come down. And he was stated to take a few weeks off to do this journey. Well, it looks like that's not happening because during that match against Jay White on Dynamite at Big Business in the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts, Darby Allen suffered what looks to be a pretty major foot injury. He even uh, posted pictures online and broke the news to his fans. Here you can see pictures of the injury. Uh, it, it is pretty gruesome. He broke three bones in his foot says on Twitter, unfortunately, the foots really broke from Wednesday's match. Everest will have to be next year. So obviously, Darby Allen, you know, suffering this big time injury. Unfortunate, given what he was going to do afterwards, do something that he's been talking about for a while. He's been talking about climbing Mount Everest. He's been talking about, you know, wanting to do this item that's been on his bucket list for a while. So that's unfortunate, but Hopefully, he's able to go next year. Hopefully, he recovers from this injury, obviously. But, you know, the inter the interesting thing here, too, is Darby Allen actually was involved in a post-match angle that, like, had him injured his foot, which, you know, is bonkers when you think about it, but almost poetic because wrestling does that sometimes. It's kind of like, you know, in, in a more, in a less serious way, I guess, you know, harkens back to when, the original plan for uh, a JBL and Eddie Guerrero segment was for JBL to scare Eddie Guerrero's mother and um, induce a, a kayfabe heart attack. But it ended up being that she got a real heart attack in that moment when they did that segment. Wild. Um, but she was obviously okay then. But um, th there's, I mean, obviously Darby Allen injuries. Th these are things that people have been talking about for a while. Uh you know, he is one of, if not the biggest risk taker in all of professional wrestling. A lot of people that I've spoken to that, you know, I, I, I've done podcasts with. One of the things they bring up with Darby Allen is like, he's a great wrestler. He's a great talent. He's cool. He's got this charisma that nobody else has about them. However, Darby does a lot of dangerous stuff. That glass spot that he did at Revolution was one of the most gruesome spots I've ever seen live on pay-per-view or anywhere else. And he came out of that relatively unscathed. I mean, he still got like, what, it was 12 stitches or something like that, but relatively unscathed compared to what, you know, could have been. I mean, and it's insane. Like, he did this spot diving to the outside that he's done a million times in his career, that he's done a million times on Dynamite. And in, in almost a freak thing, he breaks three bones in his foot. And now, in addition to not climbing Mount Everest, his timeline for return is unclear. You know, we don't know at this point when he'll come back. But um, unfortunate all around for Darby Allen. Hopefully, he gets better soon because, again, he is one of the best, I think, coolest wrestlers out there uh, in either company. Like, he has this innate charisma about him that you really can't make up. It harkens back to, you know, Jeff Hardy back in the 2000s. There was just something innately cool about Jeff Hardy, same with Darby Allen, that you couldn't, like, like, like it's, it's a lot of things that you can point to, but, like, it's not just, like, this one thing. Like, it's not a gimmick. It's, like, he's just naturally cool. So, hopefully he gets better soon. Big ups to Darby Allen. Um, another thing that we do need to talk about, of course, is some big business that's happening in WWE between WWE and GCW. As you can see from the image to my right, WWE has opened up the forbidden door as Shayna Baszler, former MMA uh, UFC prospect Shayna Baszler, now WWE superstar, will be appearing at Josh Barnett's Bloodsport 10 in Philadelphia on the Thursday before WrestleMania. 
as part of a, a, I guess, a partnership between GCW and WWE. This had been rumored and speculated before. I believe FightfulSelect.com first broke that there were going to be WWE talent at a GCW show coming up. We don't know if this is the end of it and that there could be more, but this is big. This is absolutely massive news for not only wrestling fans, but I think, you know, people who have been saying that, you know, WWE is hesitant to work with other companies. WWE doesn't want to, like, give the rub to other companies. And I think, you know, under Triple H, and, and if you look back at things Triple H has done and, and you know, like the promotions he's worked with, whether he was in NXT or whether it's been his time at the helm of WWE creative, he's been more open, I think, than Vince McMahon was for sure uh, as far as working with other companies. He did a thing. He did an appearance at RevPro a few years ago. I remember he let uh, Shinsuke Nakamura wrestle in a pro wrestling Noah match that ended up being one of the uh, final matches for uh, the great Muda, you know, so there has been that, that, that door has been open. We've seen NXT UK talent go off and, and do things in the UK Indies. So I think when, with triple H at the helm, this kind of stuff is going to be more and more common. You're going to see, you know, partnerships with Indies. We, we've heard all about this potential partnership between WWE and All Japan Pro Wrestling. We've heard about WWE, you know, in GCW. This has been rumored for a while. Like, well, Lauderdale has been, been been kind of plugging this and and then talking about it for a minute. And, and now it's finally happened. And I don't think there could have been a better person <laughs> for you to, to, to have appear at this than Shayna Baszler, who not only has an MMA background, which is perfect. For anyone who's watched Josh Barnett's Bloodsport, like, it is... One of the best presentations, I think, in all of pro wrestling. Like, it gives that like, almost MMA feel and, and and that authentic, gritty, real feel to, to things. Like, imagine Raw Underground, but way, way better. <laughs> like, like, leagues better than Raw Underground was. That was crap. But, um, I, I mean, like, I, I think there is no better person than Shayna Baszler to, to, to have, like, at least test ride this. We don't know whether or not, again, there's going to be other talent. I would hope that they would like open it up a little bit more. I think it's also a good thing for WWE to have their talent around these other events because for a while, these other events that would be happening around the Philadelphia area would just like in, in a way kind of like siphon off like or, or not siphon off, but you know, they they would kind of farm off of the people who were already going to be in town for WrestleMania and like have be like, hey, here's another wrestling show you can attend. And that's kind of like the business model for a lot of organizations who are running wrestling shows around that area or, or where Wrestle, wherever WrestleMania is. And I think this is an interesting strategy by WWE, which is saying like, okay, they're going to be there anyway. We know they're going to be there. We know these companies are going to be running shows under the shadow of WrestleMania. Why don't we just make as many shows possible? I don't think it'll ever happen with Super Card of Honor, but why don't we make all these indie shows a little bit more WWE related, you know, and 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 keep that build keep building up to WrestleMania. And and I think that's a great strategy. And like you will see people like be like talking about WrestleMania on GCW. You will see, you will hear people be like, oh my God, there's this like there's this wrestler who's like WWE star of this WrestleMania thing. Like it almost in a way kind of makes like these side indie things like part of WrestleMania in, in a more official capacity because they kind of already were in an unofficial way. But like WWE is kind of putting a little bit of a stamp here. Uh, you can even see the WWE logo on a GCW poster, which is crazy, crazy to think about. Especially when you consider AEW had a, at one point a working relationship where a lot of their uh, people were working GCW shows. That, of course, has been diminished over the past year, two years now. So, overall, very interesting stuff. I mean, will we ever get AEW and WWE to work together? I think is like the kind of jumping off question. That's a very complicated question to answer. My short answer to that one is... It is more likely now with Triple H at the helm of WWE than it ever was with Vince McMahon because Vince McMahon was, would never do something like that. He's very close-minded. He's very out of touch. He doesn't understand the the benefit that that would have, not only for the wrestling business as a whole, which I know he does, does not care about and it's kind of shown by his actions, but, uh, but I think for WWE as well because there are a lot of people 
say whatever you want to say, we're turned off by WWE for one reason or another, whether it's the booking, whether it's the shadow of the horrific, disgusting, vile Vince McMahon allegations. But there are people who've been turned off who you could get back into the product a little bit more, get back into WWE a little bit more. If you did do that for AEW, it's obviously a win-win. <laughs> I mean, like they're going to get exposure. They're going to get, you know, their talent highlighted. And I think for both companies, it's a chance to give back to the wrestling business. I'm not sure how open, you know, those discussions would be on, on more so the WWE side. I know that Tony Khan, of course, has, has spoken about, you know, issues that he's had with the current WWE management. Um, and we've seen AEW kind of lend their stars to WWE before. Chris Jericho appearing on the Steve Austin Show podcast on the WWE Network. We also had the uh, appearance of, of you know, Dustin Rhodes in the Cody Rhodes documentary. You've had, like, talent kind of, like, you know, highlighted a bit more. Again, will it happen? I don't think so. I'm not optimistic it'll happen over the next one, two years. However, the one thing to remember about pro wrestling is never ever say never but let me know in the comments section what you think about all of this what do you think about Darby's injury what do you think about GCW WWE working together what do you think about a potential super show with AEW and WWE give me some of your dream matches down below in the comments also be sure to smash that like button subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released